one of my students inside my blender course wanted to know how do you make this honeycomb pattern and cut it into a curved surface he's making this mouse right here how do you make this pattern in back i came up with two ways that you can do this you're going to pick which one suits you better either way you're going to have to model this honeycomb shit inside of blender okay so let me teach you how to do this step by step all right First of all, at the world origin with shift A, we're going to add a new circle. And in the add circle menu here, you have to set the number of vertices to six. You need to have six vertices. That's a hexagon by definition, right? Now you're going to use this hexagon to model the honeycomb pattern, all right? So fill it with F, go to top view with seven. You're going to duplicate this vertex at the bottom right here and just move it down a little bit. You can use the grid to help you place the 3D cursor right there with shift S. Then select the pattern in face select mode or select this hexagon in face select mode. Press Alt E spin, check use duplicate, set the number of steps to three. Okay. And now place the 3D cursor in this hexagon, select these two hexagons down here. Press Alt E spin, use duplicates, set the number of steps to three. Make sure to merge vertices by distance. Okay. Now you set up one of these honeycomb things. Now you can place the 3D cursor on this one, duplicate this shift D and rotate it by 180 degrees. You can do this as many times as you want to, okay? Just rotate around another hexagon so it's going to be precisely placed. Then you're going to do the same thing down here, okay? You're going to place a 3D cursor in the middle right here. Select this entire set of faces, shift D, right click, rotate by 180 degrees. Then do the same thing one more time. You can select this entire pattern, 180 degrees. Is there a better way to do this? Probably there is. This is just what I came up with off the top of my head, okay? You can model other more sophisticated patterns using this technique right here. It's not going to kill you. So now that you got a pattern like this, there's two ways that you can turn this into something that can be used to create this kind of mesh on a curved surface, okay? One of them is using texturing. If you want to go low poly, if you don't want to go hardcore topology, you can create this as a texture, okay? Normal map and alpha texture, which you can apply it to a surface, and then it's going to look like there's holes in it, but it's actually just going to be an alpha texture. That's method number one. And method number two is going to be actually cutting this into a curved surface. I'm going to show you how to use both. You're going to figure out what's best for you. Okay. So first of all, let's turn this into a texture, which you can use to, to make it look like there are holes in a surface. All right. Here's what you're going to do. First of all, you have to turn this. Let's duplicate this, by the way, with shift D and push it to the side so we can use this pattern later to cut the hole in the surface. You're going to select everything here with A. You're going to inset everything with I. Okay. And then you're going to extrude everything downwards a little bit like this. Go to individual origins up here. That way you can scale each of these individually. And you're just going to scale them down a little bit like this. Now in edge select mode with alt right click, select an edge loop around the top of one of the hexagons. Press shift G, select similar face angles. Okay. You don't want to select the faces around the bottom. Okay. But you want to select the faces at the top. Well, it's not going to be a problem if you select the ones at the bottom. But anyway, we can start by selecting these faces at the bottom here, shift G, select similar area, and you can separate these into a new object. And now when you select this edge loop around here, shift G, select similar face angles, it's not going to select the edges at the bottom because there is no angle there. Okay. And you're going to have to add a little bevel here with control B like this. Now go object shade auto smooth or shade smooth by angle. And also you can join these into the same object now. So select the surface at the bottom, select the mesh pattern that you have up here, control J to join them into the same object, right? Now, you're going to have to bake this as a normal map first. So before you do this, add another plane into the same object in edit mode, right? Place this below the surface. That way, this part is going to be a, uh, appear flat if you look at it from top view. So on the normal map, this is going to look flat. It's going to look connected. You're not going to have any of this shading. And now with shift A, add a new plane. Make sure you don't stretch it out by scaling it up only one of the axes. Just scale it up by something like eight or maybe something like seven. It's up to you how large you want this to be. Just make sure that it's inside this surface that you have around here. The plane has to be smaller and slightly above the surface. Now, here's a very important step. Go up here, check face orientation in object mode. Make sure that your shit is blue when you look at it. It can be red underneath, but at the top, it has to be blue. If it isn't, select one of these or select whatever is red or select everything with A and press control N to recalculate normals. Now it's going to recalculate some of them. Blender doesn't really know what to do, but just select the ones that are red, press control N or maybe it's shift N for you. And if it doesn't work, you can check inside over here to toggle it manually. It's very important that everything on top is blue. Okay. Then you're going to lower this and place it just above the surface like this. Select this plane, which is above the surface, go to the shading workspace, add a new material here. Shift A, you're going to add a new image texture node. Place that right here. Let's focus on this object so we can see it. 
here you're going to generate a new image all right let's set the resolution to 1024 i recommend you do 2048 at least because otherwise it's going to be grainy blender doesn't have anti-aliasing or however you pronounce this it doesn't it doesn't work this way it doesn't look very smooth when you bake shit the only way you can make it better is if you use a higher resolution so i'm just gonna keep it low resolution so it bakes faster so i don't have to sit here for 30 seconds when it's baking and look at the fucking camera and start rambling about something else but you you should set this to at least 2048 now set name this normal map whatever set this to blank check 32 bit float click on new image set the color space to non-color that's very important you can look at your image over here, normal map right here. I already baked something before, but this one's going to be called normal map. And now select this surface below, then shift select the plane. These are two separate objects. Switch to the cycles render engine. Set your render samples to something like one, as low as possible. Go down here, open up the bake menu, and you're going to set the bake type here to normal. This is going to allow you to bake a normal map. Check selected to active and set the margin size here to one, okay? And now all you got to do, you can preview your image over here in the image editor. All you got to do is go up here, click on bake and sit back and wait a couple of seconds for this to bake. And before you know it, you got your honeycomb normal map. Here's what you have to do next. You're going to need an alpha map. Okay. You're going to have to have another texture, which is going to tell you which part of this texture is going to be transparent. Okay. This is very important. So now you can lift this plane up. On this plane, while we're at it, let's also with Shift A add another image texture node where we're going to bake a different image, new 1024. We're going to name this transparency or whatever. You don't need 32. I don't know what this 32 bit float shit does anyway. They just told me that you have to do this when you bake a normal map. I don't know if you got to do this. I don't know, whatever. New image. This is going to be RGB because now we're going to bake color. So now here's what we're going to do. Material mode, edit this texture right here. Select all the hexagons, select similar. You can check, you can click on polygon sides. That's going to select all the faces which have six edges around them, which means all the faces at the bottom of the holes, right? And you're going to add a new material there, plus new material. You're going to name, you're going to make this material black, okay? So now it's very important that the bottom of the holes only is black. So now press Control I to select everything else. And now add a new material, assign that here. This has to be completely white, right? So now the bottom of the hole is black and everything else is white. And this color, the value of this color, which means the brightness over here, this value slider right here is going to determine the transparency level, okay? Or the alpha level, the opacity level. It's more a more technically correct term. So if it's black, that means value is zero, okay? Which means when you apply this, to, when you use this to control the alpha, black equals zero value, which means zero alpha, which means transparent. Whereas white means value 1.000, which means opacity 1.000 which means it's not transparent. You see where I'm getting at, okay? So now once again, lower this plane down here, just above the surface like this. Select the transparency image right here. You can preview that one down here, transparency, okay? It's very important that you select this here because the one that you select is where the image is going to be baked, okay? Now go back to your render properties. This time you, you might want to use a couple more samples. I think that this, it, it matters when you're baking uh, colored uh, maps, okay? When you're baking normal maps, you don't, you don't need any samples, but when you're, making, when you're baking like ambient occlusion or diffuse maps, you wanna use a couple more samples, okay? Go down here to bake, switch the bake type to diffuse, that means color, okay? And you have to uncheck direct and indirect because otherwise you're gonna be baking the lighting, you're gonna be baking the shadows and the reflections. You don't wanna be baking the reflections. You only want to bake the color onto this image, okay? And also, again, you don't want no margin, set this to zero, I think that's it, all right? So now, select the surface with the hexagon, select the plane up here, select the transparency node right here, and go up here to hit bake, okay? And wait a couple more seconds. So now you have a black and white image. You have black hexagons on a white surface. Here's what you do with it. You're going to approach your surface up here where you already got the nodes. There's no features on this. This is just a fucking plane, white plane. There's nothing on it. And you're going to use these images right here to create this honeycomb effect, okay? You're gonna make it look like there's holes on it. First of all, you have to plug in the normal map, okay? You're going to add a normal map node, place that right here. You're gonna plug color into color and plug normal into normal. 
you can see now it looks like you have hexagonal bumps on the surface. Ch change the color to something like blue, whatever, so, just so you can see it, right? If it's white, you can hardly see shit in this environment. Now it looks like there are bumps here, which is good because now it looks like there's a little bit of thickness, right? Now you just gotta make the holes. That's super simple. Just take this transparency right here and you're going to plug color into alpha right here, all right? Now, by default, you don't see any transparency. What you have to do is this, you have to go to Eevee, okay? Then select this object right here, go down here to material properties, and you're gonna open up settings. There's a menu called settings. You're gonna change the blend mode here from opaque to alpha clip. That's gonna cut out everything that has zero alpha. Everything that's transparent is gonna be cut out. So now, look at this, it looks like there are holes, but it's just a plane. If you want to curve this now, subdivide this a couple of times, do whatever you gotta do, okay? You can select the sides, you can curve this in many different ways, you can use curve modifiers, you can use whatever. I'm just going to use my proportional editing, set that to sharp and curve it like this, okay? Just to make it look like there's some curvature up here, all right, like this, boom. As you can see now, this is a curved surface which looks like it's got holes in it, but there, it doesn't have any holes in it. This is great. No topology issues, nothing. Now you can do whatever you want with this surface. You can extrude other stuff out of it. You can add all sorts of features. You can model the rest of the mouse using this surface right here, okay? That's one way to do this. If you're trying to keep low poly, if you're trying to keep your topology clean, whatever. This, this might be an easier way for you to do this. Another way to do it is this. You're gonna actually cut these holes into your surface, all right? That's why we have this template back here, okay? You're gonna extrude this, extrude it up. Sometimes if your normals are fucked up, you might have shit extruding in different directions. For example, if some of them are facing different directions, like let's say these right here, we're gonna recalculate them. When you extrude them, they're gonna extrude in different directions. Just don't extrude them directly. First extrude, then right click, then just lift them up on the Z axis or something like that. Select everything, press Control N. That's gonna correct your normals or shift N for you, perhaps I change my shortcuts, whatever. Maybe they change it in Blender 4.2, they always fuck up the shortcuts. I don't wanna use 4.2 because they don't have loop cuts in there, whatever. So now, you're gonna use this to cut a hole in the surface. First of all, we're going to add a plane in the middle of this object, like this. For example, we're gonna select these two cylinders, shift S cursor to select it now, the, or we could have just used the cylinder. Shift A, add a new plane, scale this up by five or seven or whatever the case may be and you're gonna have to subdivide this, okay? So subdivide this as much as possible. Well, don't, don't overdo it, but something like this is gonna be fine. Maybe we can do one more just to keep, just to make sure that there's enough geometry for this to work pretty well, okay? And now, let's check the normals real quick. Everything's blue, that's good. Shit has to be blue. Now select the plane, add a modifier, okay? Deform, not deform, generate, boolean, difference, target this using the eyedropper, target these cylinders, and now, you can move them around if you want to. You probably shouldn't do that. Control A, just apply the Boolean modifier, and now you can get rid of this. And now you actually have these holes in the surface. So now you can bevel, you can extrude this up like this. I recommend you do a little bit of Boolean cleanup, especially if you're trying to bevel this. For example, this right here. You're going to slide this with double G like this. You're going to slide this to the corner with double G. Make sure to take care of the corners, okay? You don't want to have edges bunched up in your corners. This is a headache, this takes a lot of time, which is why maybe this is not the best way for you to do it. Make sure you don't have anywhere where you have edges very close together, especially on the corners, okay? And the reason for that is the following, because now you want to try and bevel this, okay? You want to try and add some thickness. So here's what you, you might want to do next, okay? For, because you're trying to bevel this, you wanna make it look like the shading is a little bit nicer, it's gonna be a little bit more realistic, right? Here's what you can do next, if you wanna take it all the way. You're going to select all the sharp edges like this. Let's select all these faces around here, delete faces. Select all the sharp edges like this. Shift, Alt, right click and Alt, right click. Shift, G, select similar face angles, okay? That's going to select all the edges at the top and the bottom. You might want to set the threshold to something like 0.01. Make sure everything's selected. You can't just bevel this because that's gonna give you a lot of clipping issues and all this, okay? As you can see right here, you don't want any of this. What you can do instead is this. When you have all these sharp edges selected, you're gonna press Control E, Mark Seam, and now in face select mode, this is gonna act as borders for your selection. If you select something with L in face select mode, the selection is not gonna go over these borders, okay? So now, we've only selected this surface by simply pressing L, okay? Now Control I, you're gonna to wanna to duplicate this surface with Shift D and separate it to new object, okay? 
And now select all these. See, this didn't work out very well because we missed a, uh, an edge over here. So there wasn't a seam marked somewhere, which means we were able to go over this border, whatever. I don't want to fix that now. I'm just trying to demonstrate to you how this works. Select everything, Alt E, extrude faces along normals right here. And you're going to extrude everything inwards. And this is where I'm telling you, you don't want to have edges very close to each other because you're going to get clipping of all sorts. Okay, like right here, you're going to get clipping. So you want to slide these together, remove them with M merge vertices by distance. Make sure to check even offset. Okay. And now if you want to bevel this, all you have to do is select one of these edges, select similar length with shift G and just set the threshold to something very low, like 0 0.001 or something. That's only going to select these vertical edges and with individual origins. Now you can scale them. And by the way, you want to make sure to control I invert selection, delete all the faces in the back. Now select similar face angles or select similar length rather scale this down a little bit. That's going to make it look like there's a bevel here. Okay. You can also probably bevel, bevel these more easily now, now that they're more simple with control B. But again, you don't want to have edges too close to each other because that's going to give you all sorts of clipping issues, which is why you have to do Boolean cleanup. So Boolean is going to take a lot more time. It's a lot more complicated. You got to work topology and it's going to be a lot harder to work with this stuff and all this other shit, right? But the end result is going to be better probably because it, it's actually going to be a thick surface, which means you're not cheating. This is cheating. You're a fucking liar if you do something like this where you don't actually have holes. If somebody looks closely, they're going to see this is some cheap shit, right? It's paper thin. It looks like somebody used one of those things that you use to cut holes on the side of a piece of fucking paper, right? So it's up to you. You guys figure out what you want to do next. You guys figure out how you want to solve this problem. That's how I would create this mesh. Let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.